G'day everyone, Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy with this week's riveting episode of Spy Curious, what's happening in the investigation, loss adjusting, risk management and work health and safety industry throughout Australia. Our first guest this week, all the way from beautiful Melbourne, is Brett. How are you going, Brett? I'm very well, thanks, Mike. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all your viewers. Thanks, mate. It's pouring with rain here on the Gold Coast. It's absolutely uh, muggy and disgusting. <laughs> so, well, we're in our fifth day in a row in the 30s, so we could uh, we could borrow a bit of that. <laughs> no worries. I'm sure those train tracks are melting down there at the tram track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get you close to <laughs> Brett, I got you on today out of out of interest from our people. They asked me what a loss adjuster does, and and they want to know not not so much the bigger than Ben Hur stuff, but yes. the you know the everyday yeah. activities of a loss adjuster. So if you could just run through some examples of what 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 do you do during that time, mate? Yeah, absolutely, Mike, and it's a, it's a good question. What I'm happy to touch on. It, one of the things that appeals to me about loss adjusting is the amount of time you spend out of the office. So on any given day in the morning, you'll, you'll get your weekly planner and your monthly planner. But as losses occur, you will be asked to visit sites. So generally speaking, you will be issued with a, a schedule of where you need to be. Generally, it's uh, visiting sites uh, to assess a loss. So um, if I were to break it up at a bit of a higher level, uh, I would say I spend uh, approximately uh, just a bit over half my time on site uh, assessing uh, post a loss, whether that be a fire or, or a vehicle or uh, an incident of public liability. But basically each day you, you look at where you're meant to be uh, assigned by who, who you are meant to be meeting with, it generally be a client and some other investigators. Uh, and basically no two days are the same, which is one of the great things about the job, but um, basically do a lot of site visit. And then in conjunction with that, Mike, uh, I'd say probably the other largest component is the uh, composition of your reports, really, that you will generally be feeding back to the insurer who has assigned you to the task. Fantastic, mate. And how big is your team there at your organisation? We've got uh, five in the team presently. So uh, myself and, uh, and a person in operations, and then we have uh, um, someone else looking after a bit more of the uh, back end type operations, but um, uh, a small team, um, but um, you know, a very effective one and, and uh, one that works very uh, congenially, congenially together. So, yeah. <laughs> have you had uh, much activity up in Northern Queensland with the rain, Brett? Not too much uh, at the moment, Mike, it's a bit like everyone else. I mean, sort of vicariously we have, yes. And uh, I mean, we've been for, uh, watching the forecast in relation to La Nina quite heavily. Uh, and I, I noted um, two nights ago on the news, there's an incident of a hot air balloon up on the east coast that's uh, in relation to the um, Bureau and so forth. But we haven't had any, say, on the ground work there, um, but we are going to an expo uh, up in Queensland uh, in July this year. But in answer to your, have we, in answer to your question, have we been assigned any direct um, work as a result of direct uh, weather we've had recently? No, um, but I will expect that to change uh, as the year unfolds and just as restrictions lift a little bit. Okay, mate, just this is an aside. Um, back mm. in the 2000 and... Um, I think it was when we had the big rains yeah. up here in Queensland. Yes, it yes. took two and a half years for the loss yes. of justice to complete those yes. the claims, the amount of claims yes. that came out of it. So yes. it is a, a massive industry um, right across the board. Yeah, it is. And as you have alluded to, Mike, so much of it can be seasonal, i.e. when you're looking at catastrophic losses, be they hail, uh, fire, or flood, uh, and the flood, you know, can have varying definitions, but uh, very much seasonal. In relation to the question, at the time of, say, Cyclone Yasi and a little bit uh, after that in 2011-12, as you have referenced, at the time I was working for uh, Australian Red Cross as their national coordinator, we, and, and they suffered a lot of losses. But um, I know the industry's done a lot of work uh, as catastrophic losses, you know, once in a 25-year event, uh, is now being considered to be either a once in a five year event or a once in a two year event. So insurers have been put on notice by, to some degree, the government and the ICA, the Insurance Council of Australia, that one of their um, paramount 
um, I guess, KPIs these days is how quickly they're able to respond to what are considered cat losses, i.e. floods that impact uh, a lot of um, you know, residents, uh, either in a commercial or residential capacity, that want to be lodging claims you know, the, the next day, want to have an assessor on site. I mean, insurers now, I won't go into the absolute intricacies of the KPIs, but it's not unusual to be required to be on site within two days for loss, whereas if you wind the clock back a couple of years, as you've alluded to, it might take a lot longer than that for the person to be on site, a lot longer than that for the investigations to take place and then ultimately uh, if a payment was made for that money to flow through. So uh, yes, I do recall vividly those uh, large uh, water-based losses in the Queensland and there was a number of them from 2009 to 2012, uh, Yasi being the, the largest. But um, And yeah, I, I guess people were on the ground in that area for quite some time. Mm. It's a bit of a logistical nightmare because you've got to get a flight to an airport that's going to let you in. You've yeah. got to get accommodation in a wrecked Absolutely. hotel. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, got to... it's like working around a quasi-COVID all the time, as you've, you know, just absolutely hit the nail on the head alluded to. You're often going into situations where, a, you know, a, to some degree a mini disaster has just occurred or a, whenever you have a large-scale weather uh, loss or, a, a, I guess, a violent weather incident, what you're going into is a little bit reminiscent of a war zone. People see these things on TV. You know, I guess the debris spreads as far as the eye can see. There's damage. People have been displaced. Consequently, people are upset. Uh, emergency accommodation is often taken. And, and as you've just referenced, things like charter flights and so forth, they're not easy to get. And not only that, when you get there, and it all forms part of the rich tapestry of the challenge, which one needs to embrace, but when you get there too, <laughs> people are, are looking to you for... I guess, uh, expertise and guidance. So uh, it, it needs to fit well within your armory that you are able to offer, operate in these often uh, challenging environments. Yeah, well, I guess that's what they pay the big dollars for, Brett. So. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and even, even getting a hire car is a, a, a nightmare. So, oh boy. I can, I can, I can. <laughs> They're not there just laid on, ready to go and undamaged in that sort of environment. Mate, um, no. thanks for coming on again this week. I really appreciate that. I've got to put this up just to make sure. Um, we're going to have you back in a couple of weeks' time, Brett, and we're going to be looking at um, some of the terminology loss adjusters use. And uh, we're going to be looking at things, subrogation, estoppel. Yes. Oh, I'll... I'll, I'll... <laughs> I'll start to do some reading. <laughs> Good on you, mate. I think you better go through All the right. old textbooks. Thanks for coming in, Brett. I look forward to seeing you again in the future, mate. Absolute pleasure, Mike. Thank you. Good All the best. Bye.